Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kauf and I'm the Nerd of the Street and today we're installing Pop! OS 22.04. All right, everyone, it is April 25th, 2022, and today the latest long-term support release of Pop! OS was published. Pop! OS 22.04 does not include too many new features, but it does have GNOME 42, which comes with a few nice tweaks like the new screenshot tool. And we also see some slightly more convenient package management with the new update scheduler in Pop! OS. So in this video, I'm just walking you through the process to download Pop! OS, put it on a USB flash drive, and install it on a computer. Now some prerequisites here, you will need a USB flash drive, and you need a flash drive that you are willing to wipe. So anything that you want to keep on the flash drive, copy it to a computer or to another drive before you start this process. And any flash drive that's 4 gigabytes or above should work for Pop! OS. The other prerequisite is that you take your computer that you're going to put Pop! OS on, and if there's anything you want to save on that computer, once again, back it up to a drive or to another computer, because this process is going to wipe that computer. Backing up your files is outside the scope of what this video is showing you. So with that out of the way, let's cut to the desktop and get started. Alright, so here we are on the desktop, and this computer that you are downloading Pop! OS on, this can be any computer running any operating system. The one I'm using in this example is running Ubuntu, but you can already be running Pop! OS, or you can still be on Windows or Mac OS, it really doesn't matter. So open up a web browser, and we're going to go to pop.system76.com. When we go there, we're going to click download right at the top of the page, and we have the option to download Pop! OS 22.04 with or without the NVIDIA driver. I'll be installing on an Intel graphics system, so we're going to click download on that first option, and we'll see that down download start. So as you can see, this ISO file is about 2.5 gigabytes. The NVIDIA version would be about 3.1 gigabytes. Like I said, any flash drive that's 4 gigabytes or above will have enough space to fit this entire image on it. While that's downloading, we're going to open another tab, and we're going to go to etcher.io. This is going to redirect to bolina.io slash etcher, and this is a multi-platform USB flashing tool. There are plenty of other good flashing tools out there. I recommend this one because it's least likely to mess things up compared to other options out there available for Windows and Mac OS. So you can come down here if you're on a different platform and it doesn't detect it properly, just click the little arrow drop down and you can select whichever option you want. But I'm here on Linux, so I'm going to click this to download, and that's going to start downloading as well. So at this point, we're going to wait for both of those downloads to finish. And once those are both finished downloading, we're going to open up our file browser to our downloads folder. So I'll just do that here. And first, we're going to locate Belina Etcher. If you're on Windows, this might be an EXE file. If you're on Mac OS, it might be a DMG. Whatever platform you're on, just open it up. We're here on Linux, so it's going to be a zip file. We need to drag the app image out of that zip file. Now, Ubuntu 22.04 actually will not open an app image by default, even though app image is meant to be a universal package solution. If we double click on this, it actually won't open. And if we open up a terminal and we try to run it there, we're going to see that app images require Fuse to run, and we don't have libfuse installed here on Ubuntu out of the box. Luckily, we can pull in Fuse with sudo apt install fuse. That's if you happen to be on Ubuntu. Once again, if you're on other platforms, you probably won't have to do that much work to open this up. But now that that's installed here on Ubuntu, we should be able to double click this app image and have that open up. And this is what Etcher should look like. So I'm just going to get rid of the windows in the background here just to make this look a bit nicer. And Etcher is very simple. We're going to click the blue flash from a file button and we're going to select that Pop! OS ISO that we just downloaded and click open. Next, we'll select our target. Now, if you haven't plugged in your flash drive yet, go ahead and do that now. And once you plug in, you should see it pop up there in the list as an option. So just check the box next to your flash drive. Make sure you check the name and the size to make sure it's the right one, because once again, this will wipe the flash drive. So then click Select, and we'll click the blue flash button. Depending on your operating system, you might also need to type in your password at this point. That's just giving the program permission to overwrite that flash drive. And now we're going to wait for that flashing process to finish. All right, and once that's done flashing, another nice feature of Etcher is that it automatically validates that that was actually written to the drive successfully. And once that's finished, Etcher will go ahead and eject the drive for you. So at this point, you can take the flash drive out of the computer. And we are finished preparing the flash drive. So if this is the computer that you're about to install Pop! OS onto, go ahead and shut it down, power it off. If you're installing Pop! OS on a different computer, just take that flash drive and go to that other computer now. All right, so now we want to be in front of the computer that we're installing Pop! OS on, make sure it's turned off, and go ahead and plug in that flash drive that we just put Pop! OS onto. Now I have a capture card plugged into my computer, so I will cut to that when I can, but to show you this part, we need to boot the computer into that flash drive. And the process for that's going to look a little bit different depending on what specific computer you have. Basically, you're going to want to turn the computer on and watch for any text on the screen telling you what keys to press for the boot menu and or the BIOS if there's no option for the boot menu. So I'm going to push the power button here on the side of my computer and 
As you can see on the bottom, it's going to tell me to press escape for boot options, so I pressed escape and now we are in the boot menu. Once again, this is going to look different depending on your specific computer, but you're going to want to look for a boot override option or any option that looks like it'll let you choose what to boot off of. On this particular machine, it's called one-time boot. So I'll select that option and from the list of devices, you're going to want to select your flash drive. Now some computers might actually list your flash drive more than once in the list. The rule of thumb is you want to select your flash drive the first time that it appears unless there are multiple options and only some of them have UEFI at the beginning. If some of the options say UEFI and some of them don't, then select the first option in the list that's your flash drive that has UEFI in the name. That will ensure that you're installing your operating system in UEFI mode, which is generally what you want to do if your computer supports it. So I'll just press enter to boot off of the flash drive here, and we're going to get a bootloader menu. After a few seconds, it's going to enter the only option for us, which is try or install Pop OS. And depending on the speed of your flash drive, this step might take a while. As long as you see the flash drive's activity light continue to blink, then you know that progress is being made with loading Pop OS off of that drive. And eventually we will get a Pop! OS desktop here. That's the new Pop! OS default wallpaper you're seeing in the background. It's been around for a while as an option, but it's now the default in the dark theme. So before I install, like I said, I'm just going to set up the video here. All right, and I've got the screen capture going now. As you can see, the installer launched automatically, but it would have an icon in the dock if you ever needed to start it manually. So on the first screen, just select your language. It defaults to English. On the next screen, if you're using a non-English keyboard layout, you can select that. If you're wanting to try out the user interface first before you install, or if you're wanting to use this flash drive to maybe recover an existing installation, that would be when you click the demo button. If you just want to install Pop! OS straight away, you can click one of the options on the right. If you wanted to attempt a custom partitioning layout, maybe you want to install Pop! OS on a system alongside another operating system, or maybe you want to install with a different file system, you can choose the custom install option for that. But for this video, we're just going to select clean install. So we'll click the button in the bottom right of the installer to continue. It's warning me that I'm not plugged into power. That's okay, this machine has plenty of battery life. And next you'll select the drive in your computer that you're installing to. If you only have one drive, that's an easy decision to make. Otherwise, look at the name and the size and make sure you're selecting the right one, just like with the flash drive earlier. And we'll click erase and install on the bottom right to continue to our user creation here. So I'm going to type in my name. The username defaults to your full name, all lowercase. I like to use my first name as the user, so I'll type that in. And we'll click next. Then we'll set a password. Click next again. And here we have the option for Pop! OS's full disk encryption. By default, we are going to encrypt, and we're just going to use the same password as the user account that we just set. If you want to use a different password for encryption, you can uncheck that box. Or if you don't want to encrypt for whatever reason, you do have the option not to encrypt as well. I'm going to accept the default. And here on the final page, if you want to see a little bit more about what the system is doing during installation, you can click the terminal icon to see what's happening in the background. You might have to scroll up if you hit that, uh, but once you do, it should start scrolling for you automatically as more output is populated there. Okay, and installation is complete. At this point, our only options in the installer are to reboot the device into the new installation or shut it down entirely. So if you want to finish up any work you may have started in the live environment, you should go ahead and do that now. We obviously didn't do anything else other than installing, so I'm just going to click restart device. Now when Pop! OS is finished shutting down, it is not going to ask you to remove the installation media, so you might want to go ahead and do that just to make sure the system doesn't boot from it again. And when the system reboots, we should see a decryption prompt indicating that Pop! OS is now installed, so we can enter the decryption password we just set in the installer. And after that, we'll get our login screen with the user we just created. Once again, we'll type our password in, and we'll press enter to log in. And there we have the Pop! OS desktop. You will see a quick introduction wizard with some options to customize the user interface. We can choose how the dock looks here. We can customize which buttons are shown at the top of the screen. And we can choose where on the top bar the clock is located. We've got a bit of a slideshow showing some different features of Pop! OS, such as the Pop! Shell Launcher. You can open that by pushing the Super key, which might also be the Windows key, Command key, or Ubuntu key, depending on your hardware manufacturer. And that allows you to search for applications, files, and things like that. Pop! OS does come with multi-touch gestures enabled by default. We can select right here in the first time setup wizard whether we want to use the light or the dark theme. And like I mentioned earlier, the desktop wallpaper actually changes back and forth depending on which theme you're using, which is a nice touch.
We'll have the option to connect to the internet here. I am going to go ahead and plug in ethernet via a USB-C adapter. But you can obviously connect to Wi-Fi here if you have a working Wi-Fi network. You can choose to enable or disable location services. That might be useful if you use maps applications to look up routes on the internet or things like that. The next page is time zone selection. So just click where you are on the map and click next. Here you can sign into any online accounts that you might want to sync files, contacts, or other things with. And that is the last page of the installer. So there you have it. This is a functional Pop! OS desktop now. We have successfully installed Pop! OS on this computer. We can go to the About section of the settings to view the version of Pop! OS there and our version of GNOME. As you can see, the system is running Intel graphics, as you can see on the graphics line, although our windowing system still defaults to X11 in Pop! OS for now. And if you want to check out that new screenshot feature I mentioned earlier, just hit Print Screen. This used to take a full screen screenshot by default, uh, but now it actually gives you a selector. It sort of reminds me of Spectacle from KDE, uh, but you can select a rectangle or you can take a screenshot of the entire screen. You can turn the cursor on and off. Uh, really helpful if you make tutorials or things like that where you're taking screenshots all the time. And aside from that screenshot feature, like I mentioned earlier on the OS upgrade and recovery page in the settings, this is where you can actually schedule Pop! OS to give you notifications when updates are available. You can select how often it notifies you, or you can even choose to have Pop! OS install your updates automatically. And of course, that's going to be on your schedule, unlike some other operating systems. But that is just about it. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comment section below. If you want to talk with other Linux users, feel free to join the Nerd in the Street Discord server that's linked in the description, or keep an eye out in the description for other chat rooms that may be appearing there in the near future. And finally, if you want to help me make more videos, feel free to join the Nerd Club at nerdclub.nots.co for just $3 a month. And thank you so much to our current Nerd Club members for your continued support. And with that, I will get out of your way and let you start enjoying your new Pop! OS system. I'm Jacob Kauf and I'm the Nerd in the Street, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.